Hello, in this video, I'm going to be going through lesson 8.5, day 2, on quadratic functions in intercept form. If you haven't already watched the 8.5, day 1 video or gotten those notes down in your note packet, you should go back and do 8.5, day 1 first, because today's lesson builds on that. The essential question that we'll continue to answer is how do you graph a quadratic function in intercept form? Let's start by reviewing the formula for intercept form. Intercept form is equations of the form y equals a times x minus p times x minus q, where the x-intercepts are located at p and q. To get those x-intercepts, you can either flip the signs of what you see in the parentheses, or an easy way to get it is to take each of the factors and set them equal to zero and solve for x. Once you have the x-intercepts, you can use that to find the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is that line that goes through the middle of our quadratic equation, and it's gonna be halfway between the two x-intercepts. So if our x-intercepts are located at p and q, to get the halfway point between p and q, you just add up p plus q and divide it by two. So that'll give us our axis of symmetry which also gives us the x-coordinate of our vertex. To get the y-coordinate of the vertex, you take whatever you got for the x-coordinate and you plug that into the equation up here. So for example, if my axis of symmetry was x equals 2, I would replace both of the x's in my equation with 2. And then finally, the value of a does the same thing every single time for all of the functions that we've looked at. Standard form, vertex form, and intercept form, A always determines two things. First, it determines which way the graph opens. When A is a positive number, it opens up. And when A is a negative number, it opens down. If we look at the absolute value of A, that tells us whether the graph gets wider or narrower. If the absolute value of A is greater than one, the graph gets narrow, and we call that a vertical stretch. If the absolute value of a is between 0 and 1, like 1 over 4 or 1 half, then the graph is going to get wider, and we call that a vertical compression. For part c, we have another equation in vertex form. Notice this time the a is 2. Remember that 2 is going to do a couple of things. Because it's positive, we know that the graph is going to open up. But we also know, since the absolute value of a is above 1, we know that the graph is going to get narrower. It's going to be vertically stretched. It's going to go up quicker. As usual, we'll start by finding the x-intercepts. Remember, that's just the zeros of the factors. You can take each of the two factors and set them equal to 0. If we start with our first factor, x minus 1 equals 0, we have to add 1 to both sides to get x alone, so that makes the x-intercept at positive 1. Then for my second factor, if we set x plus 1 equal to 0, subtract 1 on both sides, and we get x equal negative 1. That makes the two x-intercepts 1 and negative 1, and remember to write those as ordered pairs. 1, 0, and negative 1, 0. And you could even plot those first if you'd like. 1, 0, and negative 1, 0. Now let's find the x-coordinate of the vertex, which is the same as our axis of symmetry. Remember, our equation is x equals p plus q divided by 2, where p and q are the values of the x-intercepts. Here, if we substitute our numbers in, we have 1 plus negative 1 divided by 2, which is 0 divided by 2. That's 0. This means that the axis of symmetry is going to be the line x equals 0. That's always a vertical line, and it's going to cross the x-axis at 0. Notice how when I'm sketching this in, see how it's right halfway between the two x-intercepts? The axis of symmetry should always be the halfway point. If it's not, go back and recheck your calculation. It should always be halfway between the two x-intercepts. Now to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, we can go back to the equation and replace both of the letter x's with 0 y equals 2 times 0 minus 1 times 0 plus 1. 
Simplify inside the parentheses, and that gives us 2 times negative 1 times positive 1. And when you multiply those three numbers together, you get a negative 2, which means that our vertex is located at 0, negative 2. I'm going to plot that here on my graph, 0, negative 2. And now to get more points, you have two options. You can either make a table or you can use the 1, 3, 5 pattern. If you make a table, remember that the vertex 0, negative 2 has to be the middle of your table. If you do the 1, 3, 5 pattern, just remember here A is 2. I'm going to do the 1, 3, 5 pattern first. With A equal 2, 1, 3, 5, we just multiply those numbers by 2, and that gives us 2, 6, and 10. Now, when we start at the vertex, you can see we already have the over 1, up 2 taken care of with the x-intercepts. So to get the next point, from here we go over 1, and now I want to go up 6. That puts us right there at 2, 6. And then to get the other point, we can just mirror that across the axis of symmetry. And now connect that with a smooth U-shaped curve. Now notice the y-intercept. Remember x is always 0 for the y-intercept? Well here, the y-intercept is actually the same as the vertex. Both the y-intercept and the vertex are located at 0, negative 2. If you like using the table on the graphing calculator, that's always an option too. I just typed the equation into y equal. Now I'm going to click the graph button to see a sneak peek of the graph. It seems like the vertex is at 0, negative 2. The x-intercepts are located at negative 1 and positive 1. And if we go to our table, you can see the points that we just found here. Vertex at 0, negative 2. These points are the exact same points that we just plotted. So you get the same graph either way. The cool part about using the table in the graphing calculator is that it is a great way to double check your answer. You can verify by looking at the table if you found your vertex correctly. You can also look at the graph and see if it looks the same as the one that you graphed on your paper. Here's a try now problem for you to try on your own. But before you pause the video, I wanna just talk a little bit about the A value here. Notice the A is a half. Now it's positive, so we know it's gonna open up. But since a half is between 0 and 1, we know that the graph is going to get wider. If you choose to type this into your graphing calculator and make the table, remember that when we have fractions, you have to put parentheses around them in your graphing calculator. So if you're going to type this into the y equal, you'll do a parenthesis and then a 1 divided by 2 and close your parenthesis, and then do the parenthesis x plus 3, parenthesis x plus 5. Pause the video now and give this problem a try. Here are the solutions. The first thing you should have found were the x-intercepts at negative 3, 0 and negative 5, 0. Then the axis of symmetry is halfway between those, x equal negative 4. Plug in negative 4 in for x, and we end up with the y of the vertex at negative half. You could have written that as negative 1 over 2 or negative 0.5. The y-intercept, you plug in the zero, or you go to the zero in the table. Um, I showed it both ways. Here's the table. The table might be a little easier when a is a fraction, just because there are a lot of decimals involved. But if you use the 1, 3, 5 pattern, you would just have to multiply by a half. And actually, since um, I can fit more, I actually did 1, 3, 5, and 7. You can see here, if we go over 1, then up half, then over 1, up 1.5, then over 1 up 2.5, then over 1 up 3.5. Either way, you end up with the same graph and your y-intercept at 0, 7.5. Feel free to use either method when you're doing the graph. If you want to do the 1, 3, 5 pattern, you can. Just remember to always multiply 1, 3, 5 by your a value. Or if you want to use the graphing calculator, you just type that into the y equal button, take a sneak peek at the graph, and then go to the table to get your exact points. Finding the y-intercept can be done in the table or by hand. 
For the y-intercept, you just put a zero in for x. So here, I did that down here, a half times zero plus three and zero plus five. That's half of three times five, and when you end up doing that, three times five is 15. Half of 15 is the 7.5. So that's how my intercept got to be the zero, 7.5. The last thing we're gonna look at here in lesson 8.4 day two is a word problem. We have the path of a place kicked football can be modeled by the function y equals negative 0.026x times x minus 46, where x is the horizontal distance in yards and y is the corresponding height in yards. We first wanna know how far is the football kicked? Well, notice how the football, how far it's kicked, is just gonna be the distance between the two x-intercepts. Because it starts on the ground at a y value of zero right there, and then where it comes to hit the ground, that's also a y value of zero. So the distance between those two points is how far the football was kicked horizontally. To do that, we can just find the x-intercepts. So take your two factors, and there are still two factors here, class. We have negative 0.026 is my a, and that's just times x. So set that equal to 0. And then your other factor would be x minus 46 equals 0. Now technically here, the negative 0.026 is my a value, and my factor is really just like an x. It just doesn't have a number with it because it's x minus zero. Okay, but when we solve for that first factor here, when I divide zero by anything, I'm going to get a zero. So for the first x-intercept, we have x equals zero. For the second x-intercept, if we add 46 on each side, we get x equal 46. So now the distance between those two zero yards and 46 yards would be 46 yards. So the football was kicked 46 yards. Now to find its maximum height, the maximum height is just gonna correspond with the vertex. Okay, we know that when an equation is written in intercept form, you can find the x value of the vertex by doing x equals p plus q divided by two, where p and q are just the values of the x-intercepts. So here I would do zero plus 46 divided by two, which is 46 divided by two, or 23. Now 23 is the x value of my vertex. For the maximum height, I want the y value of the vertex. So I'm gonna go back to my equation and I'm gonna replace both of my x values with 23. So we have y equals negative 0.026x, so times 23, and then multiply that by 23 minus 46. And you can actually put that whole thing into your calculator all in one. I'm actually gonna simplify just what's inside that second parentheses. 23 minus 46 is negative 23. And now I'm taking my graphing calculator and I'm multiplying those three numbers together. So negative 0 0.026 times 23 times negative 23. And I'm typing in the parentheses exactly how they look right here. Hitting enter on my calculator, it gives me 13.754. So that would be the maximum height of the football. It doesn't say what to round to, so I'm just going to um, round to two decimal places. So let's say it's about 13.75 yards for the maximum height. And again, that maximum height is just the y value of my vertex. The 23 is the x value of my vertex, kind of halfway in the middle between my zero and my 46. The y value of our vertex would correspond with 13.75. So the football ends up with a maximum height of about 13.75 yards. 
You will see a question very similar to this one on your 8.5 day two homework assignment. And this concludes our lesson. So thanks for watching and good luck as you try some problems on your own. Bye.